My parents kicked me out so my brother and his pregnant girlfriend could turn my room into a nursery, claiming I've been freeloading, even though I was paying rent. I come from a lower income family and my life has never been easy. Growing up, my brother Kevin and I didn't have much at all. My dad worked in a factory, but most of his paycheck was eaten up by his drug addiction. My mom worked as a cashier, but her job didn't bring in much money either. After dealing with rude customers all day, she would often get drunk or smoke weed at night. As you can imagine, the little money that came into our house wasn't spent on taking care of me and Kevin. Life at home was rough. There were days when our cupboards were practically empty and we had nothing to eat. Clean clothes were a luxury and our beds were just old, dirty mattresses we picked up off the street or thrifted. Basic necessities were often out of reach and the house felt more like a place to survive than a home. You might wonder why CPS never got involved, but in the town we lived in, neglect was almost normal. Parents who didn't care about their kids weren't rare, so there wasn't much of an escape for us. No one seemed to care. Our parents never checked if we went to school or how we were doing in class. They didn't care if we ate dinner or if we needed medicine when we got sick. On top of that, their arguments often turned violent. When things got bad, I'd hide in my room trying to block out the yelling and crashing noises from downstairs. During those moments, Kevin would come into my room and we'd sit together, play music loud enough to drown out the chaos. It was our way of coping, a small escape from the mess of our lives. Through all of this, Kevin and I learned to rely on each other. Kevin always tried to keep me focused on the future, reminding me that if I worked hard, I could build a better life for myself, far away from the struggles we were living through. He was the one with the clear plan. He wanted to go to college and break the cycle our parents were trapped in. As Kevin started excelling at school, something unexpected happened. People at our church began to notice his achievements. For a family like ours, where academics were never a priority, this attention was a big deal. Suddenly, my parents realized they had something to brag about, Kevin. That's when the favoritism started. My parents, who never cared about our schooling, suddenly took notice of Kevin's success. They began parading him around like a trophy, showing him off to relatives and neighbors. They acted like his achievements erased all the years of neglect and were something they could claim as their own. From then on, Kevin became their prized possession and I was just left in the shadows. Kevin, of course, started enjoying the attention. I couldn't blame him. For the first time, both of our parents were actually interested in his life and they were proud of him in a way they'd never been before. It was a huge change from how things had always been and I understood why he soaked it all in. After years of being ignored, having our parents finally care about him must have felt like a breath of fresh air. But what started as pride in Kevin's achievements quickly turned into constant comparisons. My mom, in particular, began to criticize me whenever my grades weren't as good as Kevin's. She'd tell me I needed to work harder, be more disciplined, and study like him. No matter how much I tried to explain that I was doing my best, it was never enough for her. It didn't stop at grades either. Whenever I wanted to stay after school to play basketball with my friends and unwind, my parents suddenly had a problem with it. They insisted that I come straight home to work on assignments, constantly reminding me that if I ever wanted to keep up with Kevin, I had to focus on my studies. The pressure to meet their expectations was overwhelming, and the joy I once found in things like basketball, music, or hanging out with friends was slowly being crushed by their demands for more. As you can imagine, constantly being compared to Kevin started to wear me down. At first, I tried to brush it off, telling myself it wasn't Kevin's fault. He wasn't the one who had created the situation. But over time, things began to change. The more attention Kevin got, the more he seemed to enjoy it. And that enjoyment started to change him. It wasn't long before he stopped spending time with me. Even when I had legitimate complaints about our parents, he wouldn't stand by me like he used to. Instead, he began echoing their words, telling me I was overreacting and that our parents weren't as bad as I made them out to be. Hearing that from Kevin, the one person who used to understand and support me, made me doubt myself. I started wondering if maybe he was right, if I really was just overthinking everything. But the favoritism kept becoming more and more obvious. For example, whenever my dad got his paycheck, Kevin would ask for money to buy new books and school supplies, and my dad would give it to him without hesitation. But when I asked for the same, my dad would refuse and tell me to use Kevin's old, worn-out books instead. 
If I protested, he'd argue that he didn't have enough money for both of us and Kevin needed to be taken care of more than me. It wasn't just about school supplies. My mom suddenly took an interest in cooking but only made meals that Kevin liked. It didn't matter if I liked or disliked the food, what mattered was that it made Kevin happy. It was frustrating and hurtful to constantly be told that my needs were less important because I wasn't Kevin. These small gestures kept adding up, each one a reminder that in our parents' eyes, Kevin mattered more. And worse, Kevin started to believe it too. He didn't protest the favoritism and that realization hurt more than anything. It felt like I was losing my brother, the one person who had always been there for me. With Kevin no longer on my side, I felt completely alone in my struggles. The bond we had shared was breaking down, replaced by growing resentment and sadness that I didn't know how to handle. When Kevin got accepted into a good college with a full scholarship for his academic achievements, I was genuinely happy for him. It was a proud moment for our family, and I was excited to see him get the recognition he deserved. My parents, eager to celebrate his success, decided to take him out for a special dinner. It was a big deal for them, a chance to show how proud they were of him. I remember asking if I could come along, wanting to be part of the celebration, but they told me the dinner was just for Kevin. It stung to hear that, and what hurt even more was that Kevin didn't say anything in my defense. He didn't suggest that I should come along or make any effort to include me. I waited, hoping he would speak up like he used to, but he stayed silent. That's when it hit me. Kevin liked being the center of attention, and I, I was no longer a priority in his life. I didn't want to cause a scene or ruin his night, so I let them go and have a good time on their own. But days later, when Kevin moved out to start college, the house felt strange and empty. Without him, the dynamic with my parents shifted back to how it was before. Except now, it felt even worse. My parents, who had been so proud and full of energy talking about Kevin, went back to ignoring me just like before. Without Kevin around to show off, they had nothing to brag about, and the interest in my life completely faded. The only time they seemed excited was when Kevin called from college. Whenever the phone rang, and it was Kevin, their eyes would light up. They'd become animated, eager to hear about his classes, his friends, and his life at school. It was like they revolved around him, but if I tried to talk to them about my life at school, they just nodded without any real interest, barely asking questions. Even when I worked hard and improved my grades, it wasn't enough. They'd remind me that Kevin had done better at my age, making me feel like I was still falling short. As if that wasn't hurtful enough, I once overheard my parents talking in the living room. My dad said how relieved they were to have at least one extraordinary child, and that my mom should have stopped having kids after Kevin. He even said that if I hadn't been born, they could have given Kevin a more comfortable life. Those words hit me like a punch to the gut. I had always known, deep down, that my parents favored Kevin, but hearing them say they wished I hadn't been born was unbearable. It made me question everything. Was I really just an ordinary kid? Was I worth nothing to my parents? Their words made me feel invisible, like I didn't matter at all. I started doubting myself in ways I never had before. I wondered if I really wasn't good enough, smart enough, or special enough to deserve their love. Living with that kind of doubt was suffocating, and I felt lost and alone in a way I had never experienced. But during that difficult time, I met Nate, my current boyfriend. We were introduced through mutual friends, and I still remember one of the first things he ever said to me. He told me my eyes looked beautiful but sad. That comment struck me because it felt like he could see something deeper in me that most people overlooked. He seemed to understand the pain I carried with me. Nate came from a slightly better neighborhood than mine, and while our backgrounds were different, we quickly found common ground. What started as casual hangouts eventually turned into something more meaningful. When we went on our first real date, it was clear that we had something special. Our chemistry was undeniable. We just clicked in a way I had never experienced before. Nate is my first real boyfriend, and I know people often say that young love doesn't last, but I can't help but hope that will be the exception. He's become such an important part of my life and I truly believe we have something worth holding on to. Nate has been a huge part of helping me climb out of the dark place I was in because of my parents' neglect. He's listened to me for hours, patiently hearing me talk about my family, my struggles, and the grief I've carried for so long. He's never made me feel like my pain was too much or that I was a burden. With Nate, I found a sense of hope and happiness that I never thought was possible. 
It gave me the motivation to start working harder at school, improve my grades, and take on part-time jobs to save money so I could eventually move out of my parents' house. I knew the struggle was far from over, but at least I had hope because of Nate. However, when I turned 18, things became even more difficult. My parents told me it was time to start paying them rent. They had noticed I'd been saving money from my part-time jobs over the years, and now that I was legally an adult, they wanted a share. I explained that I was still applying to colleges and waiting to hear back. I told them moving out was part of my plan, but I just needed a little more time. They wouldn't budge. They made it clear that if I didn't start paying rent, I would have to move out. I cried a lot because it felt so unfair. Kevin had never been asked to pay rent after he turned 18, not even when he was living at home before college. This was just another reminder of the blatant favoritism in my family. I felt betrayed. Amid all this, Nate suggested I move in with him, explaining that his parents were okay with it. It was such a kind and generous offer, and it made me feel incredibly supported. But as much as I'd appreciated it, I wasn't ready. Moving in together felt like a huge step, and with everything going on, it seemed too soon and too rushed. I didn't want to risk our relationship by taking that leap before we were ready, so I declined. In the end, I had no choice but to start paying rent to my parents. It was a bitter pill to swallow, knowing that the people who were supposed to support me were now demanding money instead. On top of rent, I often helped out with groceries and bills when they couldn't afford to pay. Sometimes my dad would even delay paying bills, using his money on drugs instead, just so he could ask me to cover the costs. It was manipulative, and it hurt to see how little he cared about the burden he was placing on me. But I kept quiet and did what they asked. I didn't want to start a fight, and I was afraid of what might happen if I refused. Then three months ago, Kevin called with some unexpected news. His girlfriend was pregnant. This was a huge shock, especially since they had only been dating for a few months. Kevin was clearly stressed and desperate. He explained that his girlfriend came from a strict family that didn't support pregnancy before marriage, so she needed a place to stay. Since rent was high, Kevin wanted to move back home with her to save money for the baby. He framed it as a temporary situation, just until they could get on their feet. To my surprise, my parents immediately agreed without even talking to me first. I couldn't help but feel confused and frustrated by how quickly they accommodated him. Our house wasn't big and cramming Kevin, his girlfriend, and a baby into his old room seemed unrealistic. The very next day, my parents sat me down and told me that since Kevin and his girlfriend were moving in, it was time for me to leave. I was shocked. When I asked why, my dad casually said they needed to turn my room into a nursery for the baby. I argued, explaining how unfair it was. I had nowhere to go, and Kevin, as an adult, should be able to adapt without taking over my space. But my parents didn't care. They accused me of being selfish and called me a freeloader, telling me this was about their grandchild and that I needed to stop arguing. It didn't matter that I had been paying rent every month or that I was still figuring out my future. All they cared about was helping Kevin and making sure the baby had a room. My mom coldly informed me that I had one week to pack up and move out. With no other options left, I had to accept Nate's offer to move in with him. Nate, being the amazing person he is, was incredibly supportive, helping me pack up my things and load them into his truck. But as I packed, I couldn't hold back the tears. Despite everything, that house, especially my room, had been my sanctuary for so many years. It was where I had grown up, cried myself to sleep, and dreamed of a better life. Even though I hated a lot about that house, losing my room felt like losing the last bit of stability I had. But I had no other choice. Moving in with Nate was a big step, and it wasn't easy at first. His parents knew about my situation and genuinely felt bad for what I'd been through. They tried their best to make me feel at home, and I appreciated it, but it was still a tough transition. Meanwhile, Kevin and his girlfriend moved into our parents' house just as planned. Kevin called me once after the move, probably out of obligation more than anything else. He asked where I had gone and I told him how our parents had basically kicked me out to make room for him and his new family. I expected them to be surprised or at least concerned, but instead, he downplayed the situation. He said it was just a small sacrifice for the sake of his family, as if me being forced out of my home was no big deal. I couldn't believe it. I pointed out how differently our parents had treated us over the years, how they had always favored him and ignored me. But instead of understanding, Kevin accused me of being jealous and told me to grow up, calling me childish. 
That was the moment I realized any hope of having a normal relationship with him was gone. I had been holding on to the idea that maybe, deep down, he still cared about me as his sister. But his reaction made it clear. I was on my own. I decided then and there that I was done with him and with our parents too. If they wanted to live their happy little life with their golden child and his girlfriend, I wasn't going to stand in their way. It was time to focus on myself, even if it meant cutting ties with them completely. It's been three months since I moved in with Nate and things have started to fall into place. Life has become a lot more stable and I'm settling into a routine. During all this time, my parents haven't once reached out to check on me. No calls, no texts, nothing. That's why I was so surprised today when I saw a call from my mom. I had no intention of answering, but during my lunch break, I saw several missed calls from both my parents. Feeling a bit of worry, I decided to call back. When I did, my dad informed me that Kevin and his girlfriend had secretly moved out the previous night and they had just discovered it that morning. I was shocked and asked for more details. Apparently, my parents had been okay with Kevin and his girlfriend moving in at first, but they hadn't anticipated how financially draining it would be. Kevin's pregnant girlfriend had a big appetite, and my dad complained that she ate up everything. My parents didn't expect how expensive it would be to provide for two extra adults. When the bills started piling up, my parents asked Kevin and his girlfriend to contribute to groceries and other expenses. But Kevin and his girlfriend refused. They argued that it wasn't fair to expect them to pay for anything, especially since they had moved in with the understanding that they would live there rent-free and without contributing to bills. When my parents explained they were struggling to manage the expenses, Kevin tried to reason with them, saying they should help him out as their son without any complaints. Apparently, the fight between the four of them escalated when, in a fit of anger, my mom called Kevin's girlfriend a gold digger for staying with them for free. This led to Kevin and his girlfriend packing up and moving out. Kevin even left a note saying he was done with my parents for good. Since then, my mom has been trying to reach out to them to apologize, but they ignored all her calls. Amidst all this chaos, my dad reached out to me for help. He asked if I could contact Kevin to check in on him and see how he was doing. I told him I'd try even though Kevin and I weren't exactly on good terms. But then my dad hit me with a shocking request. He and my mom wanted me to move back home. Curious, I asked him why, considering they just kicked me out three months ago. That's when my dad explained their plan. If I moved back in and paid rent, they could use that money to cover their expenses and continue supporting Kevin and his girlfriend for free. And to make things worse, my dad even suggested that I could sleep on the couch since my old room had already been turned into a nursery. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. After kicking me out to make room for Kevin and his new family, now they wanted me to move back in, pay rent, and sleep on the couch. I was so pissed that I told my dad outright I would never move back in with them. I told him that both he and my mom deserved to be cut off from their kids and that they should be ashamed for even suggesting something so ridiculous. Am I wrong for refusing to move back in with my parents? Update 1 I'm glad to see that most people understand I'm not the one to blame and find my parents' sense of entitlement laughable. I'm also grateful to have Nate by my side. Without him, I don't know where I'd be right now. After talking to my dad, I did text Kevin to check on him, since I was worried. He responded, saying he's busy but will call me back soon. I'll update once I've had a proper talk with him. Update 2 so I finally spoke with Kevin and found out there were more issues between my mom and his girlfriend that my dad hadn't mentioned. Apparently, my mom had been constantly criticizing Kevin's girlfriend, making mean comments about her appearance and interfering with their decisions like how the nursery should look or what baby clothes to buy. There was even an argument over the name they chose for their baby. My parents thought it was too simple and insisted they pick a name from my dad's side of the family. When Kevin's girlfriend refused, my mom yelled at her, saying she should be more respectful and involve the family in the decision-making process. After all of this, Kevin felt that moving out immediately was the best thing for his girlfriend's mental health. They're currently staying with one of his friends, and Kevin assured me they're managing. He also admitted that I had been right about our parents all along and apologized for not seeing it sooner. Hearing that made me feel a little better, but I know that one apology isn't going to fix everything. The only reason Kevin finally saw the truth is because our parents treated his girlfriend the same way they had treated me for years. Update 3. Thank you all for supporting me over the past few months. 
I'm excited to share that I've been accepted into a local college, and Nate and I are looking forward to starting this new chapter together. Thanks to Nate's support, I've been able to save up a decent amount of money, and I'm planning to move into a small apartment with a roommate soon. For those asking, Kevin and his girlfriend are doing well, and my relationship with my brother has improved significantly since we both decided to cut off our parents. Looking back, I'm grateful that my parents kicked me out. It gave me the push I needed to finally focus on myself and my future.